you gave, just gave a presentation on long-acting ARVs. Where are we right now as far as looking at some of the um, possible drugs that can be used, the methods of, of delivery, time frame, but this is very, very preclinical. So. so in terms of HIV treatment, um, phase 2B studies have been done with long-acting injectables uh, in terms of antiretroviral therapy. What it hasn't been done yet is to put together different agents and actually provide an antiretroviral combination. However, with single agents, we are as far as 2B. I'm sure they're planning further phase studies, but no, the results on these haven't been shown yet. So what is some of the methods of delivery that's being considered as far as long-acting? There's different methods of delivery. It's quite complicated. What is, what, how the field is called is actually nanomedicine. So it is, uh, it is the nanoformulations that are able to release the drug slowly. And that is why we believe that we can administer, because of this formulation, less drug and less often. Now, would it be administered uh, by injection or, or by uh, oral or extended uh, release? Nanoformulations can be either oral or administered parentally by injections intramuscularly or subcutaneously. So I think that uh, both formulations may be uh, studied for HIV treatment. <laughs> Uh, and uh, probably the injectables are more appealing for HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis as uh, we are in, uh, in an era where a vaccine is not being generated yet. Well, what are some of the more promising drug classes that are being looked at as far as long-acting ARVs? If, if you talk to the scientists that uh, have been able to generate the formulation in their laboratories, they tell you that every antiretrovirals may be formulated as nanoformulations. It is the lipophilic drugs that are ideal for this kind of formulation, such as the protease inhibitors and the NNRTIs. However, I've heard experts saying that uh, NRTIs that are more um, hydrophilic can also probably be co-formulated together because they would be cut they would be kept together within the nanoparticle by the lipophilic drugs. So there is interest in co-formulating all the antiretrovirals available. At the moment, uh, the NNRTI Relpivirin and the uh, integrase inhibitor GSK744 LAP are the ones that are moving forward in terms of development from both a treatment and a pre-exposure prophylaxis point of view. Is there, this is a loaded question about the time frame when we can look for this three to five, three to five years or five to ten? Is, is it so early in development? I think that if interest from the community is expressed, uh, one of my points on, on the talk I just gave, I think there is lack of acceptability. Uh, from both the treatment and the prep point of view, I think that if the need, if we, if we feel the need that we need this drug, it is realistic to think that in five years you will have an injectable antiretroviral for treatment. But it may be only of one of the drugs, and then we'll still have to That's use the. That's the problem. Yeah. The challenge is that we need uh, nanocart. So we need the antiretroviral combinations in, for example, one injection of a reasonable volume because obviously one of the limitations that has uh, been reported in other medical fields with long-acting injectables is the local site of injection side effects. Right. So those needs to be taken into consideration. Okay, well, I want to thank you for a little bit of perspective about something that's just emerging. Thank so thank you, you very much. Thank you.